So now finally it's opening, uh, we are kind of nervous because we are late, it's a strange year this year, normally it opens first in Barrow, this time we were waiting for a long time so it will be quite uh, stressful in a way that we probably cannot stop many times and have always to push to make it to the other side in time. So that's uh, just the way it is, that's nature. It's always, I'm a little bit nervous. It always takes a lot of responsibility with so many people on board. And I'm hoping I have everything, enough food and uh, from everything enough so that we have a good time. We do some uh, research. We have to collect uh, seawater samples to see if there is some uh, radioactivity uh, in the seawater. Why putting plastic in the ocean? We look uh, always, is there some plastic or other rubbish stuff in the sea? That's an exa sample for, of uh, microplastic. It's a big problem for, uh, for the animals. Stand here amongst the trees, surrounded by the cold winter's breeze. One starts to wonder about the spring and the summer and the warm. We see in Russia over there. And over there, what do you see over there? And over there? there we see, um, we see Alaska. We are here uh, at the Bering Street. Um, it's uh, we have uh, 42, 43 knots of wind, so it's kind of stormy and I hope uh, we don't do any damage on the boat. Um, a long time ago, in the last ice age, the mammoths were crossing here, so it was land, now it's water. So now I have to concentrate again for the sailing. Thank you. the settlement where there were a whaling station now there are three research groups working um, on the island mm. and it is really interesting to learn from them how they do it 
changing ice conditions are certainly a sign of a rapidly changing climate affecting this area. It's also enabled travellers uh, to traverse the Northwest Passage in one season or two seasons if they like, but a lot of travellers coming through just in one season where, you know, just over a hundred years ago it was literate, uh, literally a heroic effort to do it over the course of three years. our first one litre water sample from the Northwest Passage to see how much microplastics are in the ocean here. We're going to send it off to Adventure and Scientists for Conservation to be analysed to see how much microplastics they can find here. I've lived on this Victoria Island for 28 years. The, up until about five, six years ago, everywhere you looked, we used to have herds of muskox. And we've never had weather this warm in August. Never this kind of weather. So the global warming is changing everything up here. The Inuit people, they really depend on nature to survive. And it's, I think, the lifestyle they have where they have to look after nature also that their base is not gone for the next generation. I think this kind of lifestyle was impressive to see. Joya Haven, uh, where Atmanson all wintered, um, we were at the school giving presentations uh, to the elementary school children and also to the high school children. We did a big cleanup with the students in town. So we have seen there about 400 to 500 students, and it was very interesting because we learned a lot from the local people there how they survive in this harsh climate. You did a really great job. It was not even 10 minutes, it was 7 minutes. And you were able to collect so much uh, plastic just around the school. So that's, I think, a world record. So congratulations. Huh? I think it was just beautiful to meet all these, these people on the on the islands, on the places we met. They were so generous and always gave us a warm welcome, even though we, we didn't even know them well. They offered us their house, their, their beds even, and having a shower was so precious. Like Christmas, we felt always when we could shower again after maybe 10, 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> Ice water. Today we saw an ice bear. It was really cool, actually. I had to do a night watch. I'm just in front of the boat and you can see basically nothing and you know there are huge chunks of icebergs out there and they're somehow floating and you have no idea where they are and you're in front and you know the one behind doesn't see much more than you do. Yeah. First sailing boat on the Northwest Passage going to Hegwa Strait into Hudson Bay. Oh, I'm tired. It was hard, but we made it. 13.5 knots of speed through Labrador Narrows. I love the rain. 
singing sweet melodies I love to see bees and flowers in the trees I listen to the wind whenever I need some answers I flow weightlessly with the queen of the sea Yeah, I go to the sea when I need some cleansing I love to sing songs eternally appealing I love to dance, shake my body to the groove, baby I love to love myself and all of creation I love to love and you know I'm not concealing Open up to bliss as the mysteries revealing Singing by the fire on a cool island evening Heavens are reflecting in this moment there is oneness Let the land be sacred Let the sea be sacred Let the sky be sacred is the reason honor and respect to indigenous cultures the powers in the sharing of the old and new wisdom wake up and see there is no separation take care of mother earth because she's all providing clean soil air and waters for the future generations put out the fires of this mindless consuming give what you can and only take what you need it let the land be sacred let the sea be sacred let the sky be sacred let the earth be sacred the song is gonna end, so let's come to a conclusion. What can we do to dispel all the illusion? Kindness is the word, purposeful conversation. Healing of the earth and the graceful reparation. Kindness is the word, purposeful conversation. Healing of the earth and the graceful reparation. Let the land be sacred. See, be sacred. Let the sky be sacred. Let the earth be sacred.